Are you experiencing analog anxiety? Does film seem like it's slipping away? Are you panicking? Have you bought a digicam to try and get the film look? Oh, I know how you feel. But I'm guessing if you are as analog obsessed as I am, then you are probably what I like to call a film prepper and your fridge and freezer are chock full of expired and or fresh film just waiting for its chance to be loaded into your film camera. So I know the prices of film have gone up and there is basically a recession, but we have to have at least one thing that we enjoy. And for me and a lot of you watching, that is still film photography. And this is Lucy Lumen's Analog Adventures. So let's talk film stocks, goddammit. Santa Color 100 is fast becoming one of my favorite film stocks. The colors are punchy and saturated, especially the reds, but then the skin tones are natural and well balanced, which is pretty rare to get in one shot. Makes this a total dream film stock in my opinion. Santa Color were kind enough to send me a five pack of their film and I am savoring the last two rolls as it has really impressed me. Some of my favorite shots have been taken on these rolls of Santa Color that I've been shooting recently, especially this one of my son taken on my OM10 and this little series that I did at my local farmer's market on a weekend. The only downside here, if you could call it that, is I have read that Santa Color needs a little bit of extra attention when scanning. I believe it has quite a dominant red cast that needs to be balanced out by adding cyan in the scanning process. My lab, Ikigai, down in Melbourne, did such a great job with this film. Santa Color even contacted me to comment on how great these scans looked and said that these are representative of what the film stock should actually look like. Ikigai and some articles on Santa Color are linked below if you want to read more about that. Being a 100 speed film, it is a little bit limiting, especially for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. You might want to wait until summer to crack open your Santa Color film and use it. But here in Australia, it's a pretty good all rounder for me as we have sun most of the year. I have just found myself gravitating towards Santa Color and just wanting to use it all the time. I am loving the results. So next up on my favorites list is Adox Color Mission. Adox themselves describe this stock as having delicately vibrant tones with minty greens and peachy reds. Mmm, sounds delicious. And also very true. To me, there is a real brassy, bronzed look in the mid-tones and just an all-round kind of classic film look that is reminiscent of slide film. Much like Santa Color, the skin tones also seem to be pretty nice and natural and all-round we've had fairly good results with portraits taken on Adox. Adox has a pretty interesting backstory and they really do seem dedicated to the future of film. So I hope we see more stocks, maybe new stocks from them in the future. There are a couple of really good reviews here on YouTube of this film stock and it goes more into detail, um, but I'm really loving the colors. It's very punchy. It's very Lucy Lumen. Little side note, we did recently shoot a roll of Adox Scala, which is a 50 speed black and white film that's pretty unusual and it can be processed either as a negative or a positive. We had it processed just as a neg and I was really impressed with the results. I thought it looked really cool, especially with the flash. So definitely give this one a go if you do want to try something different. I think the results were really fun. <laughs> So next up is kind of unusual for me, Portra 160, which I actually don't have any of. So I'm just holding an empty film canister. I am definitely not a Portra person. It is very expensive, even more so now. And I've never seen any results from Portra 400 that I can't get in another film stock where I would want to choose that over Ektar or Fuji or even Color Plus most of the time. I recently tried for the first time Portra 160 and oh my God, I wish I had never tried it because now I've developed a taste for the expensive stuff. I think this looks really good and is something that I would definitely want to pay that extra for. I have shot two rolls so far. Uh, my partner shot a roll in our Nikon F100 with the 82 200mm lens and the results were so beautiful. 
We did a shoot for a local accessories brand and these photos have gone out in their newsletter and I believe on their website as well, which is very exciting as I am as into fashion as I am photography. We pushed this film one stop as the light was a little bit dull and we just wanted that extra punch and really show off the green colors of the accessories. The Australian brand Radical Yes is linked below if you want to check them out and they even have their own YouTube channel as well. So after falling in love with the results of Portrait 160 so much, I decided to put the second and only roll that I had left in my Olympus Pen FT. I think this is a really great way to use a more pricey film if you do have a half frame camera because you're going to get double the shots and oh my god, I fell in love again. These shots just blew me away. I used half of this roll to shoot a local boutique, which is something I've been doing a little bit more of lately, like brand and venue photography, but we'll save that for another video. So I'll share a few shots of the boutique with you. And there wasn't a whole lot of natural light in there, but the shots just came out so well. I'm really impressed. And this pink hair comb on the vanity is really popping and isn't something that I would by looking at say it was Portra 160, not that I'm hugely familiar with it, but I just was really loving all of the shots that I got on this roll. I finished the rest of it off just on a little walk around day with my partner and I love this orange van in the afternoon sun. It just pops, looks so nice. So overall with this roll, I got a lot of shots out of it because I shot it in my half frame camera and I shot it in very varying lighting conditions. And I guess it's no surprise, but yeah, it just did so, so well. And it was kind of nice knowing that I was shooting with a film that has a lot of latitude and there's room to play with things a little bit if I don't get the exposure bang on. Speaking of half frame, I do have a video coming up later this month on that, but the scans I got from my lab Ikigai were amazing. I think that everyone would be pretty surprised at the size of the scans you can get from half frame and the size you can print those scans at. So if you liked any of the shots that you've been seeing in this video so far, including the half frame shots on Portra 160, you can head over to my print shop. It's all linked below and you can see for yourself how well these half frame shots print. Okay, so another pricey film, but I have had so much success with Sydney Store 400D, I just had to include it. I do have a full video on my channel where I go through more in detail about Sydney Store 400D and there's a little photo walk of me shooting it at a classic car festival. But for those of you who haven't shot it, it's a pretty good all rounder film with great dynamic range. You get some halation, of course, because it's Cine still, but not as much as 800T, which can, sometimes look a little bit overdone. So I do prefer the halation in the 400D. So I shot a bunch of classic cars at a classic car festival and one of my shots ended up in an exhibition, which was very exciting. And I just love the way Sydney Steel 400D rendered the colors, like the bright colors of the cars. And then I just got like that little bit of halation. It's just so nice. I haven't tried it myself, but my friend Matt from Matt Loves Cameras has a few videos on pushing Cine Still. And it seems like you can really push it to its limits with fairly great results. So it would be a good low light option as well. In Australia, a roll of 400D is coming in around $28, 28 Australian dollars. I'm not sure what that is in USD, but it's definitely not a cheap option. But I think having a couple of rolls of it in your fridge to pull out when there's like a special event or something where you do want to take advantage of that halation or you just want to kind of feel a bit fancy, but not with Portra. So I know everybody's talking about film dying and digicams and the price is going up, but I thought, hey, why not make a video just about the film stocks that I'm excited to use in 2023 and just kind of remind everyone that, you know, we can still be shooting film. Maybe we're not shooting as much as we did last year, but I'm super keen to know what you have in your film prepper stash. What film stocks are you excited to try or shoot in 2023? Comment below and let me know.